What's going on, guys? Welcome back. And we have a drop of slop up top. That's right. The Sixers have signed the veteran mystery backup big. And it is Willie Cauley Stein who signed to a 10 day contract yesterday. I don't think this is actually the big that Daryl Morey was talking about when he went on rights to Ricky Sanchez and said, buy out imminent, a veteran big is going to be signed sometime the next few days. If I had to guess, that would probably have been DeAndre Jordan. I think so. I think it was probably DeAndre Jordan. Then Anthony Davis got hurt. That might have changed the plans for the Lakers a little bit. Instead of cutting DeAndre Jordan and playing on the buyout market, they decided to maybe keep him because their center depth is so bad right now. So it makes a little bit of sense to me that maybe DeAndre Jordan was the guy. He has a relationship with Doc Rivers. He played with James Harden last year in Brooklyn. Kind of fits the mold of the type of big that the Sixers need. But ultimately, I didn't want DeAndre Jordan on the team anyway. So it doesn't really matter to me. He has not been a good player for quite some time. I don't think he's going to have some sort of revitalization with the Sixers. On the other side of that, Willie Coley Stein's not very good either. So that seems to be the issue here. It's a 10 day contract. We'll see how things work out. It's not the end of the world. Sixers fans are acting like we signed him to a Supermax, when in reality, it's fine. He'll probably be the third center. He'll probably get a chance to show if he can be the backup in practice and, and during some games, maybe get some run. And I understand that Sixers fans are concerned with the backups behind Joel Embiid. It is very concerning to have 37-year-old Paul Millsap, rookie Charles Bassey, and second-year Paul Reed, who has never been able to crack the rotation in Philadelphia as the backup bigs, add in Willie Cauley-Stein on a 10-day contract. It doesn't make you feel any good. At the same time, there weren't a lot of options out there. There's a reason why at this point of the year, especially with a bad buyout market, like buyouts usually don't help at all. But once we found out Dennis Schroeder wasn't getting bought out from the Rockets, Gary Harris wasn't getting bought out by the Magic, even Robin Lopez, who some people would prefer over Willie Cauley-Stein not getting bought out, definitely made the buyout market pretty bad. The best two players... The best three players, really, all together that have been moved during the buyout market were DeAndre Bembry, who signed with the Bucks, Javon Carter, who also signed with the Bucks, and Goran Dragic, who signed with the Nets. So those three guys, Goran Dragic was never coming here. He had relationships with Steve Nash. He wanted to go to Brooklyn. Okay, whatever, fine. We could have got Javon Carter or DeAndre Bembry in the Harden trade if we really wanted them. So clearly... I don't think the team valued those guys or wanted them on the team, and they would rather go with a backup big, which is fine to me. The only wing that was on the market that I would have had any interest in was James Ennis. Uh, ultimately, I think that this probably isn't going to matter. Whoever we were signing probably was not going to crack the rotation, but the, the wing depth and the center depth, it's not great. It's not great at all, folks. It, it's bad. So I am a little bit concerned, but just kind of going back to Willie Cauley-Stein in general, like he's one of those weird players where like all you ever hear about is like how he's much better in theory than in reality. Like Kings fans, Warriors fans, Mavs fans were always like, he always left you wanting more. Like he's clearly talented. He's an athletic guy. In theory, he's like a rim running shot blocking big, but apparently has very bad hands. And he's inconsistent with his effort level on both offense and defense. Advanced stats kind of like him. So it makes sense that Maury would go after him. In general, this is a very Maury signing, if you think about it. Like, Maury tends to look for guys that were former high picks. He did this a lot in Houston. Former high picks who fill a need, fit with the team, and are basically exactly what they need especially with James Harden coming in, looking for an athletic big who can maybe catch lobs, even though he has hands of stone, I've been told. I don't know. Play competitive defense, hopefully. Maybe tap into some stuff that he's never displayed before in his career. That is the hope with Willie Cauley-Stein. Now, kind of going back to what I was saying before, advanced analytics tend to like him in general. Like, his defensive metrics are good. Every calculator boy will tell you he's he's not as good as as the numbers will say um but 
once again, this is probably the third center emergency break glass in case of emergency type guy. And we probably won't be using him all that much or featuring him all that much unless someone gets injured or unless the young guys really just can't play with the team, which is a possibility, by the way. Like Paul Millsap is 37. Charles Bassey is a rookie. And even though he's shown flashes, he has not been consistent. And Paul Reed is Paul Reed, who like, I love Paul Reed. Don't get me wrong. But it's now year two and he's dominated at the G league level. And he's had once again, flashes played great defense on Giannis earlier this year, but he has not been in the rotation recently. And while doc rivers can drive me absolutely insane with this shit, I don't think that those guys are getting shoved down the depth chart because they're really good. And they have not had the opportunity like Tyrese Maxey last year. I think it's a little bit more like, they're not that trustworthy yet. Like they still need to gain his trust. And like, it's not comparative to him. Just like when he didn't play Shea Gilgis Alexander early in his rookie year as much or Tyrese Maxey last year. Like those guys were obviously very good basketball players from the start of their career. These guys still might have some time. They're 21 and 22 years old. And just generally speaking, he like, Doc does not play guys that are young, but the majority of guys that are in playoff rotations, especially on finals teams, teams that have aspirations of going to the finals are usually not rookies or second year guys. Just generally speaking, that's not the case. I went through the last seven finals and tried to find how many rookies and second year guys were in the rotations. And It is truly not a lot. Keep in mind, we already have Tyrese Maxey, who has proven that he is a starting level point guard in the NBA. Absolutely should be in the rotation. 100%. No one would disagree with that. He's been awesome. So we have one guy. So that that is, you know, obviously has some level. I have some level of optimism about the, the fact that a second year player can play deep into the playoffs and in the finals. And I think that Maxi has shown that he is clearly levels above the other young guys on the Sixers and shouldn't really be compared to them. But if we go back, I went back to the 2015 finals and I picked out every single rookie and every single second year player that was on those teams. Let's start with the 2021 finals. These are guys that played at least 50 minutes in the finals. Last year, Cam Johnson, he's 24 years old. He was a very old player coming out in the draft. He played spot. Nah, he played played rotation minutes. He had over 100 minutes in the finals last year. He was an important player for the Suns. So, okay, 24 years old, a little bit older. You know, Sixers young guys are a little bit younger. They don't have nearly as much experience as Cam Johnson did in his first two years. But it's something to keep in mind. Tyler Hero in the bubble finals, famously played great in the Eastern Conference finals, struggled in the finals, was targeted a lot defensively, but he was an important rotation player on that team. He was also a lottery pick, so keep that in mind, lottery pick, and the bubble was kind of a unique scenario in that a lot of guys that came back for the bubble, it was almost like they were starting their second year. They had three months off to practice and work on their game. Tyler Hero came back looking way better than he did his rookie year in the bubble. And as we know, shooters benefited a lot from that environment. Playing with no fans, playing with no crowds at all, and playing with just the players and the coaches and the refs in that gym definitely had a huge major positive impact on Tyler Hero. So, okay, there's one. You could compare him to Maxi almost. Like he's like, Maxi in theory should be like our version of what Tyler Hero was to those Miami Heat teams, okay? Kendrick Nunn played in those finals teams too, but he was only playing because Goran Dragic got hurt. So keep in mind, Goran Dragic gets hurt. Kendrick Nunn comes in, plays very poorly in the finals as well. Did not play well, but they didn't really have any other options for a large majority of those finals. So it's fine. Kendrick Nunn playing, not very inspiring. Okay, so now we have... Old Cam Johnson in his second year. We have the rookie Tyler Hero in the bubble experience. 
We have a rookie Kendrick Nunn who only played due to injury. Let's go back to the 2019 finals who, uh, you know, ball discord favorite Alfonso McKinney played 57 minutes. So just over that 50 minute threshold for the golden state warriors due to Kevin Durant's injury in that series. He's barely been a rotation player since he's 29 years old. Now the time he was 26, he was in his second year. It's a little bit different. It's almost not comparable really. Like he, he, he was a fringe rotation guy, which is what I guess we're hoping from Paul Reed and Charles Bassey. Give us 10 minutes a game, see what you, we can figure out. But it's, it's not, once again, not very inspiring. There is no long history of this, at least recent history. Okay, 2018 finals, Warriors once again. Jordan Bell, does anyone remember Warriors legend Jordan Bell, who the league freaked out over when the Warriors got him, even though he is now like, I don't even know where he is. He might be in China or Europe or something. Maybe he's on a G League team. I don't know. But either way, he played 54 minutes. So once again, spot minutes on a fucking loaded team with Kevin Durant, Steph uh, Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, like they were the Warriors. Like they could afford to play those guys spot minutes. So just keep that in mind. 2017, there were no rookies or second year players. 2016, there was no rookies or second year players. And 2015, we had second year, 24 year old Matthew Della Vadova, who we all remember had a great finals, had a great run with the Cavs that year. And he was good. Surprise. I, he was an undrafted player, I believe. All good. No no hating on Delhi, but at the same time, pretty much an outlier. Like, you know, he played, but like that was really the only good time that he had in his career in the NBA. So this last seven year history, there have been six rotation players, seven years that were rookies or second round teams on finals teams. The large majority of these guys only played because of injury and one was successful, Tyler Hero, in the bubble. And then Cam Johnson and Matthew Dellavedova were kind of the success stories. They were a little bit older, but they were the success stories when it comes to this. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it's fine to have Willie Cully Snide, Paul Millsap, along with these young guys, and just see if James Harden can elevate their game to a point on offense that they are a useful, good rotation player for the Sixers because it's not going to be a simple solution. So once again, I'm fine with this signing. It, maybe he's gone in 10 days and we don't even have to worry about this. But at the same time, Doc drives us all insane. He doesn't play young players as much as we want him to. But in this case, I think we will be totally fine in terms of like, we're not missing out on a ton with Bassey and Reed. I think that they can play in certain matchups. There might be certain matchups that they can't play in. And I don't think that's going to make or break whether the Sixers are in the finals or win the finals or go to the Eastern Conference finals. Famous last words, right? Always worry about the backup center behind Joel Embiid in Philadelphia. We can't seem to get this thing right. We finally did. and We had to trade him away, but it was worth it because we got James Harden. And James Harden is a Sixer. And that's all that fucking matters. So later this week, I will be back with another podcast. We're going to record the day after James Harden plays his first game with the Sixers. So Friday, he plays his first game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Saturday, I will be recording. So subscribe to the channel. Don't miss out on that. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. I'll put the, the link in the description below. So once again, thank you for your support. Please subscribe, support us, do whatever you can. I really, really appreciate it. Peace.